Hey, welcome to today's flip lesson. Today's lesson deals with angles and circles. And in particular, we want to look at how any angle in a circle, on a circle, at the center of a circle, uh, an angle that's outside a circle, how does that angle interact with its intercepted arcs, meaning the part of the circle that the angle slices through. And I think the easiest way to look at this is to break this down into four different scenarios. And the key to understanding the angle arc relationship is to always ask yourself, where is the vertex? Where is that angle's vertex? So in your notes today, you see that I've broken it down into four cases. And let's dive into each case. Now, as you take notes, I really encourage you to pause the video when you need to pause, mark up your picture, interact with your picture using colors, using a pencil, pens, whatever it takes for you to fully understand how these angles and arcs relate to each other. So let's get started. So the first angle arc relationship is a familiar one to you. It's what happens when the vertex of the angle is on the center right here. Now, you know, we have a name for this. The vertex is on the center. The sides of the angle are radii and we call this angle right here a central angle. And if you think of the, the analogy we made that an angle is like a mouse and its intercepted arc is this part of the circle here that that mouse would take a bite of, then you could see that the intercepted arc for the central angle is right there. And we've learned that we, we define the angle as being the exact same as the arc. So if this angle was 70 degrees, this arc is 70 degrees. And, and you can work backwards. If this arc was 100 degrees, this angle would be 70. Now, the second uh, placement of the vertex of an angle is what happens when the vertex is somewhere in the circle, not necessarily on the center, but somewhere in the circle like here. This angle right here, how would we find that angle's measurement? Well, if we trace the sides of the angle out until it hits the circle, and we pretend that that angle is a mouth and we take a bite humph, of the circle, then we can easily see that angle's intercepted arc. But in this scenario, notice we have a vertical counterpart. And what do we know is always true about vertical angles? Well, I hope you said vertical angles are always equal. So not only does this angle have this obvious intercepted arc, but it has a vertical counterpart or a back door that we have to worry about. And in this angle's vertical counterpart, if we extend the sides of the angle out to the circle and we take a bite of that circle, hump, then you'll notice we have a second arc to worry about, arc sub two. So in this scenario, we have two arcs. We have the obvious arc, and then we have the vertical counterpart or the back door arc. And when that happens, we average those two arcs. We say the angle is half the sum of the arcs. So if this arc was 40 degrees and this arc was 60 degrees, why either of these angles would be one half their sum or 50 degrees. Let's take a look at the other two scenarios. Another scenario is what happens when the vertex is on the circle. Now notice there's an asterisk and that means we're going to come back to this one in just a minute. Now we've dealt with a lot of these angles before, like in particular, this angle down here in the picture, we call this an inscribed angle. Its vertex is on the circle and both of its sides are chords of that circle. And again, if we pretend an angle's a mouth and we take a bite of that circle, then you see this is the intercepted arc. And as we've learned in class, we know that this angle turns out to be half the arc. There's an asterisk and we'll come back to that in just a minute, but let's handle the fourth main case. And the fourth main case is what happens when the vertex is outside of the circle. So if the vertex is outside the circle, like we have right here, notice that when the mouth of this angle, now remember an angle's sides are raised, they go on forever. Notice that this mouth, when it bites down, it actually eats two parts of the circle. It eats this part out here, which I will call arc sub one. And then it also eats this part right here, which I'll call arc sub two. And notice 
in every example we've done so far that all the arcs are bending away from the vertex of the angle. All the arcs, that is, except this one. And in this scenario, when the vertex is outside the circle, the angle is half the difference in the arcs. So half the bigger arc minus the smaller one. Now, let's come back and take a look at this asterisk and see what it says. There is a tricky scenario or a special case when an angle is made up of two secants. Now, secants are like chords in that they hit a circle twice, but the difference between a secant and a chord is a secant is a line that goes on forever. Now, in this particular instance, the angle I want to look at is this angle here. And you might think, oh, the vertex is on the circle. The angle is half the arc. So when this angle takes a bite, chomp, it eats that arc. And that's true. It does eat that arc. And that arc is an intercepted arc for this angle. But if we look at the back door or the vertical counterpart, notice that its vertical counterpart, its identical angle, would eat this arc. So this angle has two arcs arc one and arc two. And in this particular instance, we would say the angle is half the sum of the arcs. Now, I think the best thing we could do is just jump in and see if we can apply these formulas. We'll talk about where these formulas come from tomorrow in class. But right now, I really want to understand how these formulas work. So I'm going to skip a page we'll come back to later, and let's do some practice problems. All right, here's our first practice problem. I need to find x. Now, x is an angle. Its vertex is on the circle. And when I trace out the sides of the angle, and I'm going to go through the vertex just to look for that vertical counterpart, that back door, through the vertex. The vertex is on the circle. There's my angle. Its intercepted arc is this arc right here. I check for a back door. Is there a back door to worry about? And there's not. See how the vertical counterpart never bites down on the circle? Now, the key is I've got to find this, this arc measurement right here. Now, I do know this is 100 degrees, and I know something else. I know that this chord is equal to that chord. And if you remember in our homework the other day, we learned that chords that are equal have equal arcs. So since this chord has an arc that's 100, this chord would have an arc that's 100. And how many degrees do we allow in a circle? Ah, so I think now you know that must be 260, or sorry, 160. So here's my formula. The angle is half the arc. And when you do your homework tonight, I want to see which of the four formulas you choose. So show me that formula. And then plug in. The angle is x. The intercepted arc is 160. So show me the numbers you're using, and then show me your answer. x is 80. Let's jump in and try another problem. Now, in the next problem, let me pick a color here. I'll pick red. We're looking for this angle, x. And I know the vertex is in the circle. So we have two different arcs we need to worry about. We have this arc out here, this arc right here, a, R, C, sub 1. And we have this back door arc. I'll call it A, R, C, sub 2. And in this scenario, I'm going to use the formula for when the angle's vertex is inside the circle. So that angle's half the sum of the arcs. Now, I don't know what this, this arc right here measures. There's no indication that either of these chords are diameters. So I. I just, I don't know what that angle, what that arc is, or what that arc is. So we have two things we could do. One is we could, we could figure out what this angle right here is. And we could say that this angle is half of 110 plus 130. But watch what I did instead. I said that x, the angle we want, is half of 120. Now, how did I get 120? Well, how many degrees are there in a circle? Well, there are 360 degrees in a circle. And I already accounted for 100, so I'll subtract, or I'm sorry, 110. And I've accounted for 130. 
Ooh, that's a terrible arc. So if I've already accounted for 110 and 130, that leaves 120 degrees left. And that 120 has to be this arc right here and that arc right there. Now, I don't know how that 120 is split up, but you know what? I don't need to know how it's split up. I just need to know those two arcs add up to be 120. So in this case, we could find out that x is 60. And I'll bet you some of you did this a different way, and we can talk about that tomorrow. Let's take a look at another problem. Ooh, ooh, this is a good one. Where's the vertex? Well, the vertex is outside the circle. So there's the formula I want. I know it's going to be 1 half of arc 1 minus arc 2. So if I trace out the sides of this angle, here we go. There's one side. There's another side. When this angle takes a bite, it eats that arc and it eats that arc. Now I know this arc is 120 and I'll bet you you all could figure out that this arc right here is 50. All the arcs add up to be 360. So x is half of 120 minus 50. It's half of 70. It's 35 degrees. Again, in tonight's homework, I want to see three things. The formula, the numbers you used, and the answer. Now let's take a look at number four. Number four, where's the vertex? Well, the vertex is on the circle right there. I look at the vertical counterpart. Does the vertical counterpart intercept the circle in any way? No. So I trace out the sides of x. I trace them out through the vertex. And when that angle takes a bite of the circle, it eats this whole arc. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, right back to there. The whole thing. And how much is that whole thing? Well, if this black part here is 110, this purple part's 250. Vertex is on the circle. The angle's half the arc. Half of 250, 125. Let's do a couple more. Number five, where's the vertex? Well, the vertex is outside the circle. The vertex is right here. And when I trace out the mouth of that angle, those two sides, I see that that, that angle hits two arcs. And I said two arcs. Let's see them. Here's one arc. From where the mouth hits the circle to where the mouth hits the circle. That's 280. Now the second arc is the arc that's bending in towards x. So that arc is this one right here. And what's the measure of that arc? Well, the whole circle is 360. So the measure of that arc is 80. Vertex is outside the circle. There's my formula. I plug in the numbers and I chug through the math and I get 100 degrees. Last problem is this one right here. You ask yourself, where's the vertex? The vertex is on the circle. I trace out the mouth of that angle through the vertex, go through the vertex. There's x. So what's this mouth bite down on? Well, if this is 100 and this is 170, I think that's 90. But don't forget, always look for the back door. And the back door eats this 100. See how this arc right here is eaten by that mouth. So in this case, vertex is on the circle. It's half the arc plus a back door. It's half a 90 plus 100. It's 95 degrees. Well, I hope this helped. You have an entire backside to this, and you, you might need a different sheet of paper unless you write really small. But on those 19 problems, I want to see three things. I want to see the formula you're going to use, the numbers you plug in, and your answer. Have fun with the homework tonight. We'll see you tomorrow.